I'm playing chicken. I'm basically saying NVIDIA and Apple have become too big a part of my portfolio. Um, I have tons of Apple exposure elsewhere. I own the Qs. I own a wealth management firm. Everybody owns Apple. Um, so my lifetime exposure to Apple is very high. So all I'm doing, all I'm doing is keeping 80% of my position instead of 100%. Um, it's not that bold. And I'm doing the same with NVIDIA. These stocks have ballooned. So this is like risk management is the best way to, to phrase that. I don't want to be out of these stocks. I think they're phenomenal companies. I just don't want to live my entire life based on how they do each day. Um, so I think this is what all prudent investors do, and, and it's what I'm doing. Well, it's, it's not a bold move. I wouldn't call it a chicken move either then, Josh. It sounds like more of a responsible move. Well, I mean, I'm doing this 20 years. So, um, you know, there's that great Warren Buffett quote about what it feels like when uh, you're, you're toward the end of, of the party, so to speak, uh, and everyone's drinking champagne and it's the hardest thing on earth to walk out of the room. Um, and then you look up at the clock and the clocks have no hands. And I think that metaphor is really <laughs> apt. We have no idea if Apple, if, if Apple puts on another 20 percent before this, this run is over. How could we know? <clears throat> All I know is it's, it's metastasized in the scheme of the entirety of my individual stock holdings. And I don't want it to be that way. So I'm adding other things. I added to Starbucks, which I know we're going to talk about later in the show. Recently bought Simon Properties. I have some new positions on, and I just want to be prudent with the, the big winners of the last mm -hmm. few years because it obviously won't go on forever. Yeah, so Stephanie, it might be a good lesson there, whether it's Apple, whatever asset class it might be, perhaps Josh brings up a good point as he usually does, which is just, you gotta know what you own, be careful that one position doesn't become sort of the monster. By the way, I do worry about Apple and the FANG stocks being that for the macro market overall, but that's probably a different segment. You still own Apple, you call it expensive, but you're not gonna trim. <laughs> well, I, I think what Josh is doing makes 100% sense. And I did that with Facebook. I sold out of Facebook completely, and I have been trimming Amazon because they really did become very big positions, overweights um, in my portfolio. The, the reason I'm going to stick with Apple is I really do think you have these catalysts of the four-for-one split, the 5G, and I think you have to step back and, and ask yourself, is this just a hardware company or is it a consumer products company? And if it is a consumer products company, which I believe it is, it's trading at a 10% discount to the consumer products companies in general. So it's you can justify a lot of different ways. You can do some of the parts. All I know is this company can actually deliver 12% earnings growth in the last year, 24% free cash flow growth in the last year, all while the iPhone sales were down 1%. Can you even imagine when 5G comes out what the operating leverage really will be? So I also think it's interesting there's only 61 analyst buys on the sell side on this one. So kind of kind of surprised me. That's versus Amazon, where you have 94% of the sell side having buys. So a lot of people on the same side. I'm not saying this is not crowded. It is crowded. But I can still justify owning it. And I have you know a slight overweight position uh, relative to my benchmark. NVIDIA, I, this one scares me because I can't justify the valuation. However, um, I think it's stay at home because they have they have benefited from the gaming exposure, right? And AI and data center. On the on the flip side, they're actually a reopen name, and that is because they have auto exposure. So I kind of want to play the auto side of things, and I don't think it's really well discovered or well talked mm -hmm. about that in terms of this part of the the business. Plus, you've got a fabulous management team. So. I, this one makes me a little nervous, but I'm just going to hold on at least because I like the trends of where I see. I, I love it. You know, it. I can't justify the valuation. You could you could say that for like, you know, I normally don't eat cake for breakfast, but just today I'm going to make an exception. <laughs> I mean, you, it sounds like everybody is saying that. Jump in here, Josh. Well, so, well so wait, Apple I would just, added... I would just, I, I, I would just simply say on NVIDIA. While I can't justify the valuation, I do like a lot of their end markets and their total addressable markets. And I don't want to have, uh, I have 50 names in my portfolio. This is just one. I don't have many of these names where they're really, they've skyrocketed and they're very, very expensive. I have managed yeah. that, the, the position sizes accordingly. So I just want to make sure you're, you know, that, that the audience is clear. Yeah.